Welcome back to our final segment of this edition of Chamber Exchange, a TV show. Again, want to thank Bank Hometown for being our sponsor and helping make the show happen. And in this final segment, pleased to have with us uh, Liz Wimbui, who is the Director of Diversity and Inclusion and Community Impact at Fontaine Brothers, uh, and Christina Baselmans, who is the Associates of LPAA. And uh, some people might wonder what LPAA is. It's a well-known name in Central Mass. Lamoro. Pagano so Architectural Associates. Associates <laughs> Architects, that's right. <laughs> Associate Architects, so LPAA and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, Liz Wambui with Fontaine Brothers. Now, yes. both of you have, in your companies, have worked together on some pretty significant projects. Yes. Um, but before we get into that, both of you are graduates of the Chamber's Leadership Worcester Program, Ooh. which Liz was mentioning prior <laughs> to. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And Great. maybe uh, quickly, what did you get out of that program? And for, for our viewers who don't know, it's usually a cohort of 25 to 30 uh, individuals who are selected through a competitive process to be part of a cohort that really gets together monthly at least uh, and really digs in on learning about the community in different sectors. Yeah, yeah, and informally too, right, outside of um, the sessions. I mean, so first of all, you know, friendships, right? I mean, there are folks that, you know, were part of my cohort that will be friends for um, a long time for the rest of our lives. But also too, you know, professionally, folks that I can call and, you know, if I'm, experiencing a certain challenge, hey, do you know a resource for X, Y, mm -hmm. and Z? Um, and so for that, I mean, I couldn't recommend uh, Leadership Wizard enough. Yeah, I, me too, <laughs> for the same reasons. And that additionally for me, just incredible perspective. I got such an amazing behind the scenes look at everything happening in the Worcester community, yes. to the people, to the businesses, to, to the government. It was a fantastic yeah. experience just to see behind the scenes. Well, thanks for stepping forward and, and, and and apply. Yeah, that's well, great. And, and for a little commercial for the program. <laughs> yeah. So we want to talk about construction uh, and, you know, the jobs that that creates and specifically what's going on with Doherty. But uh, Fontaine Brothers, uh, New Nelson Place, uh, South High, uh, LPAA was a, a part of that school architect design piece. And right now Doherty High is under construction, which, uh, um, which will be the largest public high school at, at this juncture once it's completed. Uh, designed for 1,600 plus students, grades mm -hmm. 9 through 12. So maybe you could talk a little bit about the project and then what's to be incorporated in it. Yeah, so the, it's a very exciting project. It's, it's a, um, again, a really massive high school. It's such an exciting project for the city of Worcester. Um, they're going to have such expanded programs offered at this school that their old building could not support. Right. So really expanded, um, you know, PE and arts and music programs. And they're also adding Chapter 74 programs that aren't currently there. In addition to their engineering and technology program that they have now, they're going to add construction craft laborer, programming and web development, and marketing management and finance. So it's really going to help to bolster sort of those yeah. trades and career opportunities. For yeah, and so our, for our viewers who might know what, not know what Chapter 74 programs mm -hmm. are, those are kind of vocational technical programs, exactly. the Vogue schools. And we've got a waiting list at Worcester Technical High School. Right. There are waiting lists at the Vogue Tech schools across the state. Right. And so what we have seen in Worcester has been uh, a leader in petitioning the Department of Elementary and Secondary of Education to add Chapter 74 programs to the comprehensive, comprehensive high schools where the students can focus on an area and get right. some real world experience. Yeah, right. And certifications yeah. that get them going right at graduation. Exactly. Right. Yeah. You're graduating job ready. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Right, and so you mentioned currently darty has got engineering mm -hmm. and... Right now, they, I believe they only have the engineering, engineering and technology academy, which is phenomenal. There's, I think, over 300 students in it, and it's yes. a fantastic program. And yes. so this, this new program, the Living Laboratory, will add in... Well, so the Living Laboratory actually is kind of a way that we've taken the construction site itself okay. and started to bring all the students and community yeah. members throughout the community in behind the gates, in past the fences, into the construction okay. site itself to really start to expose and shine a spotlight on all of these wonderful right. careers that are in the design and construction industries. So we have partnered with the ETA program, and we see that there's a really great synergy <laughs> with, with the programs that are going to be offered at the new Doherty. But it's really been an opportunity to really try to increase the diversity and the exposure to these phenomenal careers that are being highlighted at the Doherty and Liz, Project. Liz, I assume for Fontaine Brothers, that's music to, to your ears in <laughs> oh. the sense of 
you, you want more young people going into yes. the construction trades. Understand what that means, right? Exactly, exactly. Because, you know, as, as most folks may know, um, the city now has workforce requirements on all construction projects, right? And so this is at once a short-term and a long-term goal, right? We need to make sure that we are feeding that pipeline with, um, you know, a younger, more diverse um, talent pool, right? And part of you know, the strategy too is helping educators understand, you know, what the opportunities are within the construction industry so they can then counsel um, the students and, you know, sometimes um, guardians as well to understand the opportunities that are available um, to, to the students and, right. you know, to the children. So, yeah, it's, it's absolutely a key workforce development strategy for us. Right. Mm -hmm. and, so, and so the programs with the new Doherty, the new Chapter 74 programs will be architecture. Yeah, the engineering. Mm -hmm. Architecture, engineering, and construction yep. will be new ad ad added uh, yeah. opportunities under the Chapter 74 umbrella. Exactly, yeah. yes. yes. Yeah. Um, and so in terms of uh, the living laboratory, I mean, is it students at Doherty right now that you're bringing through? Is it beyond Doherty High School from across the city? How is that? Oh, yes. yes. It's beyond um, <laughs> the, the current students at um, Doherty High. So we've actually partnered um, with Innovation Pathways. And, you know, one really cool uh, program that we um, have been doing as part of the Living Lab is having a half day of a presentation and career fair, bringing, you know, together um, seniors across the district. So they spend their morning learning about the project. Um, but also they get an opportunity to, in addition to walking the site, talking to union representatives, talking to subcontractors, talking to folks who, ha who run uh, pre-apprenticeship or apprenticeship programs, right, to understand, um, you know, what, you know, the, the types of education um, that they would need to, you know, to enter the industry. So that's, that's been, you know, we've been doing that since, you know, 2021, mm -hmm. and we actually, the next one is coming up in, uh, on January 11th. Um, and so again, we, you know, this project is so cool. Um, we've, you know, had job, uh, job corps. Um, we've had, you know, students from Monty Tech. We've had, you know, students from Girls Inc. I mean, we have really mm -hmm. um, expanded our reach as much as possible because, you know, again, none of us, you know, know, we don't know what we don't know until we, you know, yeah. we know, right? So. Um, we just want to, you know, spread the message, you know, as far and wide as we can. Mm -hmm. and so, Liz, you mentioned the Innovation Pathways program. So, yes. in addition to these Chapter 74 programs, which we know are sought after and oversubscribed, the, the Worcester Public Schools has also added an Innovation Pathways program, which students from the traditional comprehensive high schools can participate in a, in a Chapter 74-like program. It's not exactly, exactly where they or at their traditional high school, but then can go up to Worcester Technical High School to maybe learn about some of the Chapter 74 programs. Yeah. I think Worcester Technical High School's got 23. Right. Yes. Um, and people sometimes think it's just the building trades, which we know is very important to, <laughs> to find <Fontaine laughs> brothers, but there's financial servicing, yes. there's coding, there's biotech, right. you know, there's as the traditionals like cosmetology, there's food uh, and culinary oh. and hospitality. So. 23 environmental sciences, so there are a lot of programs. Yes, that's absolutely. Great. Yeah, no, kudos to the city. I think, you know, that's right, being part of Leadership Worcester, you really, you know, understand um, just how many programs we, you know, we have now within a, you know, right. district that are just, you know, phenomenal. And right? Allied like, Health, uh, and uh, yeah. Allied yeah. Health, which <laughs> is both at Worcester Technical High School and I believe at uh, North High. That's the one okay. I did when I was at North, yeah, way yeah. back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> and then South High and the new facilities got the... Uh, yeah, uh, Auto Diesel D and yeah, Diesel the marketing tech, which yes. is, right, mm -hmm. right. Which is the largest in the state, I believe, yes. right? Yeah. It's the largest, yeah. 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 Right. So, so far, good. I mean, just in a minute, we've got left the reactions as you bring them through, the students, and, you know, uh, have you gotten <laughs> people say, I want to make this a career, or how do I learn more? Yeah, I mean, some of that. We get a lot of selfies. <laughs> it's very the TikToks, exciting. TikToks, Tim. The TikToks, yeah. TikToks <laughs> are great. But really, it's just it's just planting that seed that this right. is an option for you. Career that exposure. these all of yeah. these different careers are an option for you, and you can pursue them. And I think yeah. that it's just been it's been awesome to have those students come through. It really has, and it's always amazing to you know see let's say like the Girls Inc. Uh, mm -hmm. participants in a different setting and. You know, they reference, you know, being on site and being in the trailer and seeing the team of women, right, right. who are, right. you know, right. helping, you know, run, not who are helping, who are running, you know, the project. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, and that's really, um, you know, the kind of impact that we want to, 
you know, make. And right. And also, I know you mentioned the environmental sciences program, but this is these schools are also trying to embrace all the best yeah. practices under the construction and design from from uh, green and being energy efficient and yep. and self self. Yeah. Yeah. Dory is going to be I, its targeted lead gold and and is is going to be one of the most sustainable municipal facilities in the city. So it's very exciting. Good stuff. Well, we got a wrap here, but Liz Wambui, who's a director of diversity and inclusion and community impact at Fontaine Brothers, Fontaine Brothers Construction, and Christina Baselsman, associate or principal at LPAA. Thank you for being with us and talking about some exciting stuff in terms of construction and career exposure. Thank Thanks. you so much for having us. Thank you for being with us in this edition of Chamber Exchange, a TV show.